We are now joined by UFC strawweight Corey McKenna. Corey, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. We'll take our first question from Mike Bond with USA Today. Your line is open. Hey, Corey, can you hear me all right? Yeah, all good. Okay, I couldn't hear you before. Um, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of the questions we just asked Kay here, but a little bit of history between you two being the youngest female matchup in terms of combined age in UFC history. Um, is this the kind of fight you expected for your debut here? Do you think maybe you would get someone a little more seasoned in the game? Um, I mean, generally you tend to see, obviously, they see a lot of uh, the new prospects and stuff coming in. Uh, they tend to fight someone that's kind of on their back end of the career or on their way out. Like, I uh, that, tr that transition seems uh, very common in the UFC, but I never really uh, thought too much about who I'd be fighting when I got into the UFC, as opposed to the fact that I just knew that it was going to happen eventually. So, um, you know, very excited to get in there regardless of who it is. And I'm actually excited that it's going to be, like I say, two young prospects. I think it's going to be a very exciting fight. Yeah. And you kind of alluded to it there, but what does it mean to you to finally be here? Oh, it's, you know, it's, uh, bit surreal to be honest um feels feels like i'm uh, in a dream but uh yeah it's it's amazing it's a great opportunity and i'm um, really looking forward to it yeah and there was a lot of attention around uh Kay coming from her debut you know ronda rousey was tweeting about her people were betting you know big sums of money on her and stuff do you think this is an opportunity for you to go in and kind of steal some of that shine for yourself and show who you are in this fight uh, I'm not too worried about that, to be honest, in terms of like the hype and all the following and stuff. Obviously, it's, I receive an amazing amount of support myself. Um, I'm very grateful for everyone uh, that's you know sending me support and everything. Um, Kay's an amazing athlete in herself, so you know not not going to be trying to steal any of her thunder. Um, regard like you know when I go out there, going to get that win on Saturday, but you know she doesn't take anything away from her and everything she's accomplished so far. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's going to be a great fight. There's a lot of support behind it, like you say. Um, whether they're support like rooting for me or rooting for her, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be a very popular fight. Great, looking forward to it. Thanks for the time. Thank you. We'll go next to Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, Corey. Uh, after your win at Contender Series, you talked about how you were going to be moving to the United States for training and living full time. Um, I know obviously stuff uh, with Corona has changed a lot everywhere, but were you able to finally make it? Yeah, um, Contenders actually opened up the opportunity for me. So um, after that, I stayed in the US and I moved straight to Sacramento. So I've been there pretty much since, well, I've been there since since the Contenders fight, um, making the most of, obviously, I had the travel restrictions waived thanks to the UFC. So uh, yeah, just capitalized on that and made the move straight out there. Uh, obviously, you know, doing your thing in Cage Warriors, which is a big promotion uh, overseas, is huge, but the UFC is a whole nother level. Can you talk about just what it's like? I mean, obviously you're young, but now you're getting a lot of attention, I'm assuming. People are very excited about your career that maybe hadn't heard of you before. What's it like just to, you know, deal with that change of all the added attention? Yeah, like you said, I've always received a lot of support, fortunately, and obviously fighting on Cage Warriors, which was... Uh the biggest show in Europe, so obviously that was a large platform in itself. It's not been too much of a, a, ch a change for me um, in terms of step up, obviously a lot more media and a lot more um, stuff like that, but uh, you know, nothing nothing we can't handle. But uh, yeah, it's very, it's very exciting. Obviously it's a lot busier, a lot more exciting. Everything's kind of, uh, you know, go, go, go. But um, yeah, re really, it's, it's, it's been amazing. Uh, out of curiosity, because we did just have Kay Hansen do the media before you, did you run into her coming in as you were doing your interview? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay, just curious. Uh, my final question, uh, joining the UFC, you know, you're on another fight night, but there's a lot of big stuff that happens. There's a lot of big cards and pay-per-views, and there's travel, Fight Island, and then obviously, you know, in the future, we expect that all to come back. What do you want to do in terms of yourself personally? Do you want to travel a lot? Do you want to fight on the undercard of a particular star? Anything like that? Um, not particularly. I just want to stay active. Obviously, I had a big layoff um, last year, so I'd really like to just stay active for the uh, you know for the upcoming future. Um, obviously, it'd be great to travel. I think very fortunate in this sport that obviously we get to travel around the world we get to see lots of different things whilst doing what we love so obviously if the opportunity arises for me to see new places and travel to new places that would be amazing but for now my only goal is to get this win on saturday and then get back out there as soon as possible and stay nice and active 
Hey, thanks, Corey. Good luck. Thank you. We'll go next to Damon Martin with MMAfighting.com. Your line is open. Uh, coming off the Contender Series win, I, I noticed on your Instagram you posted a photo of yourself with Dana White from when you were uh, several years ago. And you kind of kind of made a joke. Your mom kind of embarrassed you at that moment. Could you tell that story, how that happened, and, and kind of come in full circle you know, seven years later and signing with the UFC? Uh, yeah, so back in, I think it was 2013, we, I went to my first ever live UFC event. Um, and yeah, like we had, we had good seats. We were down by the front. So obviously Dana White walked past, took some photos with a few different people. And uh, my mum being a stereotypical mother um, to someone who's just started fighting, she uh, yeah she she ran over. She was like, ah, oh, five years time, you're going to be signing her. I mean, it took me seven. So uh, a little bit, little bit behind schedule, but, uh, you know, I guess I guess she was right. She knew what she was talking about. Obviously, I was very embarrassed at the time, and you know, being a being a young teenager, I was like, "Mom," but uh, yeah, it got yeah. That was that was fun. It's a good story. <laughs> we we remember, and maybe you've, I'm sure you probably heard this story, maybe not, but you know, years ago, you know, Conor McGregor, you know, came to a UFC event. He had a photo with I think it was Chuck Liddell and somebody else. And years later, you know, he becomes Conor McGregor. I mean, is it cool though, thinking back, you know, seven years ago, you're a fan, you're 13 years old, sitting in a fight, and now here you are about to make your UFC debut. Like, is it kind of crazy kind of putting those two things together? Yeah, they like say it's it's completely crazy. Like, that feels like yesterday to me. Um, you know, this was like a pipeline dream, and uh, you know, we managed to get it done. So, um, yeah, like you say, it's it's a bit surreal, but uh, knew it was going to happen eventually, so I'm just glad to be here. You've been out at Team Alpha Male, and we hear a lot. I mean, I don't think there's any giant secret how good that team is, but we hear a lot about Uriah Faber as a mentor. You know, we've seen with a lot of young fighters, you know, Andre Feely speaks his praises constantly about how much Uriah has meant to him in his career. Uh, how much has Uriah meant to you in terms of, you know, not only as a coach, but as a mentor, as a young fighter? Yeah, Uriah is amazing. You know, he's a veteran of the sport, obviously Hall of Famer and all that. Everyone knows that. But he is also one of the most selfless people you'll ever meet. Um, I've yet to hear anyone say anything negative about him and what he does for but not just the sport and the team, but individuals as well. He he really took me under his wing. You know, he puts a lot of time into me. Um, he's a very busy man with obviously, like say, a new family and everything, but he still finds the time to check in on me and come come in and do private sessions with me and everything. Um, so, yeah, the, the support I receive from him is is completely unreal. And, uh, yeah, it, it, I like it. It's a bit of a testament to kind of... Um, that he sees, he sees something in me, which which means a lot. Um, and I just hope on Saturday I can go out there and make him proud, really. And, and last thing, you know, kind of following up on that, working with Team Alpha Male over these past few months full time, you know, actually coming to the States. Do you feel like that's kind of your plan going forward? You want to stick with Team Alpha Male and that's going to be your team, you know, from here on out? Uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've made that move. Um, I'm currently only on like a three year visa, but um, like I'd like to stay there for the first future for sure um i really feel like i fit in well there the, the coaching staff's amazing um obviously mentioned uriah faber but i've also been doing a lot of work with you know joey rodriguez for my boxing danny castillo's gone above and beyond you know he's like he's been in vegas pretty much the last three weeks with fighters uh solid he's been like zoom chatting me like uh sessions and everything you know he's he's not seen his family and he's still coming in to train with me and everything and coaching my sparring rounds so he's he, he's another one that's completely gone above and beyond and i don't think gets enough uh enough praise and recognition for what he does um yeah and obviously all the other coaching staff at team Alpha Man have been amazing like chris holdsworth and mike Mallott and everyone um and then all my teammates so i just i just feel like it's been a really great camp and i'm really fortunate like uh, you know, I'm very grateful every day that I managed to get spent on those mats. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to making some making some gains there in the future. Awesome. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. We'll go next to Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Hey, Corey. Uh, welcome back. Uh, when we did speak to Kay earlier, the idea came up that she might have an experience edge. I'm just wondering how much you think your amateur career will uh, play in, because I believe you started all the way back in 2014 in the amateurs. Uh, yeah, so I started, my first fight was 2015. I was, I was 15 years old. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize quite how extensive my background is in itself. Um, like, I've been obviously trained in martial arts for over half my life now. Um, I was competing jiu-jitsu pretty much every weekend as a kid. You know, I had like multiple junior Muay Thai titles. Um, so I think a lot of people don't realize quite how 
much experience I had in the, let's say, in the amateur and, and junior ranks uh, before turning pro. So, and then I think there's there's only like three or four fights difference in the the pro rank, uh, like the pro re- re- record for us. So, I don't. If anything, I'd say I have the experience edge. Um, I just think maybe I a little bit more quiet than than some others. And how different is the feeling this week compared to what you felt ahead of the uh, Contender Series fight? There's no difference, uh, if I'm honest. Um, You know, I was discussing this with one of my coaches the other day, like kind of the same process. You know, we've we've worked hard. We're in the same hotel. You know, we're fighting in the apex. It's the exact same same, uh, cage. It almost just feels like, you know, going out there another day in the office, going to, going to go get the work done and uh, it's nice and relaxed to be honest and I'm just having a good time Dana did kind of struggle with the age factor when he made the decision to award you the contract after that fight how important is it for you to win or lose put on a strong performance in this make sure he knows he made the right choice uh, I think he was also trying to build a lot of suspense uh, also didn't help that I think I wrote down that I was 20 on something because I'd only just turned 21 and I'm not the brightest spark but um yeah, uh, no, so I think, you know, he's just trying to build a bit of suspense, but I definitely think that on Saturday I'll be able to go out there and put on a dominant performance and, you know, make sure there's no room for doubt that I am where I where I belong. Um, and, yeah, that I'm confident that's what I'm going to go out and do. And, uh, you know, hopefully afterwards he realises that he made a good choice. And last one for me. I mean, Kay's known for her grappling, her submission. She won her first fight by armbar. The UFC debut, she won by armbar. Is the grappling side, the submission threat, something you've really been focusing on this camp? Uh, not really. I approach every fight the same. You know, I think I'm not going to obviously sleep on a striking and obviously you say got to have respect for her ground game. But at the same time, when I go into a fight, I just focus on everything and making sure that I am the best version of myself all round. Um, so I'm confident whether it's on the feet, whether we're wrestling, whether we're grappling. Uh, as I said before, I've, I've got a lot of submission wins. I've got a very extensive background in jiu-jitsu and stuff myself. So I don't think it's a, there's much threat there anyway. Uh, not there's much threat, but also I'm not that here worried about it, if that makes sense. Like I'm, I'm comfortable if it ends up there and confident that I could actually probably get a submission myself over her. All right. Well, best of luck this Saturday. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Corey. You're all set. Oh, thank you.